welcome to my new video studio, which is also actually my craft room. If you don't follow me on social media, you might not know, but I spent the summer moving to Houston. And now I have the room in my house to set up a studio. I don't have to shoot in my dining room like I did during the worst part of the pandemic when I wasn't going to the studio anymore. So now I have this dedicated space and I'm going to kick off the first video in the new dedicated space is a very sweet baby cardigan. We are going to run through all the techniques used in this cardigan. This is called My First Cardigan. It's by Vanessa Ewing and it's brought to us by Kramer Yarns. It uses their Perfection Sport Yarn. The Perfection Sport Yarn <clears throat> is a merino blend that is easy care. It's machine washable and dryable and it comes in I think 70 colors, more than 70 colors. If you're looking for a color, you're gonna find it. And the sizes of the sweater are zero to three months, six to 12 months, and 18 to 24 months. So a broad range of sizes. The, the Perfection Sport yarn is just the right weight for a delicate little sweater. It is, it is fun to knit and it's a top-down raglan, which is my preferred way to knit a sweater, so it's really easy to get a good fit. Um, the techniques used are some pretty standard raglan techniques like you know top down separating the sleeves knitting the body um, we're going to cover all of that we also are going to cover the cable cast on and picking up and knitting working garter stitch in the round and flat it'll all be in there um, if you would like to get your pattern and some yarn click the little eye in the upper right hand corner to be whisked off to my website where i'll have all the links from kramer and I'll also put the links in the video description field below if you're watching on YouTube. Um, I don't know, I'm excited to be in my new studio. I'm excited to show you how to knit this sweater. Next up, we are going to start with, uh, we'll get a good look at the sweater and start with the cast on. Okay, we are ready to get started. Let's go ahead and take a close up look at the sweater first. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is take a look at the sweater and talk about the construction. You can see in this sport weight yarn, in the Perfection Sport, it's just a light sweater, maybe for a day that isn't too chilly. I can see this worn over a sundress or overalls or something. And because it is Perfection Sport or Perfection yarn, it can be put in the washer and dryer. It's easy to care for. And here you see I, Took a trip through my stepmom's button box and picked three vintage buttons for this. There are three different sizes, but because the buttonholes are stretchy, that didn't make a difference. The buttons work just fine. All right, let's talk about the construction of this. We cast on here. This is the way it is for all top-down raglan sweaters. You cast on at the neckline and you knit front sleeve, back sleeve, front, all at the same time with an increase point here here, here, and here. You can see the lines for the increase points. And you keep knitting that way until you get to here, and then you separate the sleeves, you reserve them to knit later, and finish knitting the body, and then go back and knit the sleeves. I said that this is a way that all top-down raglans are knit. It is such, it is my preferred way to knit a sweater because it's so easy to fit. There are no surprises at the end of a sweater not fitting because it's, it doesn't make so much difference with a baby sweater because Usually with a baby sweater, you're gonna knit it a little bit too big for the baby you're knitting for, it will eventually fit them. For an adult sweater, you, know, you want that to fit. So you can knit down to here before you separate the sleeves, reserve all the stitches onto scrap yarn and try it on the person. Whether it's yourself, someone else, try it on them to make sure that these lines match up under the arms and it fits across the chest and everything. If it's too tight, you just work a few more increase rows until it fits. If it's too loose, you might want to uh, uh, rip back a little bit until it does fit. It is a no surprise way of getting a sweater that fits really well. That's why I love knitting top down sweaters. So is that all I want to say about this? I think so. We're going to cover, we're going to talk more about the details of this sweater, but I want to actually work through the couple row, first couple rows of the pattern with you. Um, uh, also, one more note, 
This can be, the bulk of this sweater can be knit on straight needles if that's what you prefer. You're gonna have to use double pointed needles or flexi flips or magic loop for the sleeves, but you can knit the bulk of this sweater on straight needles. I prefer circulars, so I'm gonna demonstrate on circulars, but it makes no difference really. So row one, you cast on your stitches. I used a long tail cast on, and I can give you a link here to my video for a long tail cast on if that's new to you. You can use knitted or long tail cast on. Row one, WS means wrong side, the wrong side of the work. P2, purl two, three or four, place marker, purl six, place marker, purl 22, and it goes on from there. Um, so we're going to place the markers to show where the increase lines are. So really, this is the only row we have to count in. <laughs> the rest of the rows, we just work up to the marker. It gets a lot easier. Um, but when you see in, in any pattern, really, you see a number followed by more numbers in parentheses, this is for the, the smallest size, this is the next size, and this is the next size. So anytime you see that, just uh, whatever size you're following, use that number. If you only see one number, that applies to all three sizes, all the sizes. So we're gonna do that first. We're, this first row, I've already cast on, this first row is just placing the markers. So I'm gonna get myself four little ring markers. and you get to watch me not be able to count on video. <laughs> this is my worst thing. I should really make sure that I'm in frame here. I told you this is my new studio. Okay, I had to make sure I was recording too. <laughs> I'll get these kinks worked out. Okay, so pearl, two, and then just pop a marker onto the right needle, purl six, place a marker and now I'm knitting the smallest size in this one by the way now it's purl 22 and I'll definitely lose count here I should talk about the yarn colors this color here is called sprout it is, I use it all the time. It's a Kramer yarn I use all the time. And the pink, the pink in the finished sweater is called Coral Bell. And of course, I've totally lost count. At this point, I'm just working towards eyeballing the numbers at the end. <laughs> okay, I wanna do 22. Two, four, six, eight. 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, pretty close. Place marker, pearl six. Oops. Pearl six, place marker, the last marker. Oh goodness, someone's having their lawn done outside. That's something about my new neighborhood is that there is always a lawnmower or a leaf blower or something going. And while I appreciate everyone keeping their yard nice, it's, it's noisy, <laughs> it's very noisy. Okay, let's take, let's take a, um, a look at what we have here. We have the four markers, and remember I said we have these four increase lines, right? And we're knitting front, um, front, sleeve, back, sleeve, front, all together. So this, these two stitches here, this is actually the left front of the sweater, left sleeve, back, 
uh, right sleeve, right front. It's hard to tell right now, but it's like all of the elements of the sweater are already on here. <laughs> it's hard to believe. So we're gonna look at um, this next row, because there's a lot going on in this next row, a lot of good things to practice here. K, F, and B, knit front and back. That is a one stitch increase, and I'll give you a link here to my video on K, F, B. Knit to one stitch before marker, make one right. Knit one, slip marker, knit one, make one left. You repeat that three times more. Okay, this is, this is what's gonna happen. Let's talk about it before we do it. We're going to knit to one stitch before the marker. We'll knit up so we have one stitch and then the marker. We're gonna make one right, knit one, slip the marker, knit one, make one left. And we do that around each marker. Make one right, knit one, slip the marker, knit one, make one left. And it sounds like a huge string of instructions right now. I swear you'll, you have, you'll get it because we're gonna be doing it so much. Um, but because this is, you, you of course have to read the pattern carefully. In this row, we're also doing a knit front back stitch in the first stitch and knit front back stitch in the second stitch. And there is uh, a couple ways that we get shaping around the neckline in this sweater. And this first one we're gonna cover is the, the knit front back and then we're gonna do some cable cast on stitches. That's coming up. We will talk about that. So let's, let's work this increase row together. Oh yeah, and the right side rows, we also call them increase rows in, um, in top-down raglans. So knit the stitch normally, swing the tip of the needle around to the back loop of the stitch, put it in there, knit that stitch again, then pull the old stitch off the left needle. That's a KFB, but I've given you a link if you need a slower demonstration of that. And now we're going to make one right pull up the loop between the two stitches and put it up on the left needle and then knit that stitch through the front loop. Make one stitches are maybe the most complicated increase, so I encourage you to click the link to slow motion make one stitches if these are new to you. And people always ask, can I use a different increase? Yes, if you don't wanna use make one, you can use a different increase. So make one right, knit one, slip marker, knit one and then make one left. Pull up the bar between the two stitches, put that on the left needle from front to back and then knit that through the back loop. And we're just going to keep doing that three more times. And I give you some tricks in my video for getting make ones, getting them a little easier to work. They're a nice and visible increase though, and you can see in this sweater, they make a nice line of increases. It's pretty. This row is pretty short right now. You get further into the sweater, especially in the larger sizes. It is really good TV knitting, because it's a lot of just plain knitting and purling. Make one right, knit one, slip marker, knit one, make one left, and then up to the next marker. That lawnmower sounds loud. I hope it's not my yard. I do have a, well, I have a brand new lawn guy. He's only done my lawn once, so I don't even know what days he comes. Okay, my last make one left, and I'm down to my last stitch, and I have to remember that this is a KFB. So I knit the stitch normally, swing the tip of the needle around to the back loop, and knit that. Okay, what I've just shown you here, that is the bulk of this sweater. That is mostly what you're going to be doing. That and purling across, because row three, purl across. That's what most of the wrong side rows are going to be. So that, I mean, I've just shown you like the secret to top-down raglans. <laughs> different top-down raglan patterns will have you working different, um, different increases, but uh, the basic concept is the same. 
Now, what do I want to show you here? I want to show you something called the cable cast on because it's more of the shaping here at the neckline. We use um, cable, cast line, cable cast on at the end of some of the rows. And it's just for, <coughs> excuse me, it's just for um, this beginning of the sweater. Once we get down into here, we don't, uh, we don't do it anymore. But you have to read the pattern carefully so you don't miss these things. And I want to do this on a bigger sample. So I have some perfection worsted, same yarn and a bit heavier. So I have set up this sample so that I've just worked, I've just finished a purl row. And in the pattern, let me get this right, because Vanessa explains, she uses different wording than I would use, but it all still makes sense. So I've worked a purl row and it says, um, do not turn work, instead cable cast on three stitches. And this is actually like row seven that I'm working here. So I don't turn the work. You know what? I'm, gonna, I'm going to hold that thought. I actually have row six here. I've just finished a right side row, okay? And now I need to cable cast on a few stitches. Vanessa says, um, don't turn the work. That actually kind of makes sense. So, well, no. Do turn the work. <laughs> this is the way I do it. I'm sorry to be confusing. I just like changed gears a couple times there. Do turn the work. We're going to cable cast on three stitches onto this same needle. So empty needle in your right hand. Put your needle, I'm going to do a close up of this. That's why I have that other sample. Put your needle between the two stitches. It's not where a needle normally goes. Wrap it, pull it through, pull that stitch long and pop it up with a little twist on the left needle. That was one. Between the two stitches, wrap it, pull it through, two, tighten it up. Don't worry, I'm gonna show you this again. So that was cable cast on three stitches. It just made the, the front of the sweater significantly longer there with more stitches. Okay. Because this is uh, finishing up a wrong side row, we'll say this is row seven. I'm going to show it in a bigger sample. So you, I actually do turn the work, even though the pattern says don't turn the work. Put your needle between the two stitches here. Wrap it. Pull it through. I like to pull that stitch really long so I have plenty of room to kind of give it a twist to get it up on the needle. You see that? And then you put the needle between the last two stitches again. Wrap it, pull it through, pull it long, give it a little twist. And you can tighten it up a little bit. Don't tighten it up all the way until you get your needle in there, otherwise you'll have a hard time. Wrap it, pull it through, give it a little twist to get it up on the needle. You see right there? Wrap it, pull it through, little twist. I actually just cast on four there. But you can see that here's my work and then here are these extra stitches I've just cast on. And you work them like normal stitches. They are normal stitches. Um, so cable, cast on. Let me see my list because that's the, that's the bulk of, oh, I know, I know. We're going to take those out because I'm going to show you how to work a buttonhole. Because these, these buttonholes are so tiny, they're the easiest way to work a buttonhole. And I'm going to use this sample again to show you. So uh, we have the garter stitch border. And let me get, let me figure this out. No, I'm not. I'm just going to show it to you. So the buttonhole instructions are, I was going to actually like try to follow the sweater, but it doesn't make any sense because this sample is so tiny. The, this is how to work a buttonhole. Knit one, knit two together, yarn over. That's the whole thing. And then you just keep, keep on with the rest of your pattern. And what you've done, what you've done is you've yarned over which is just kind of a loop over the needle, but you're going to work it like a regular stitch, right? 
and then in the next stitch you knit uh, and in the, before that you knit two together and then yarned over so you decreased one increased one so your stitch count stays the same but you've created a hole in the work let's take a close-up look at a buttonhole that's what you get just a little hole in the work like People email me all the time like, why is there a hole in my work? It's like, usually it's because of an accidental yarn over. Well, an on-purpose yarn over will give you a little tiny buttonhole. It's great. And then when you go back to work the other direction, I'm just going to quickly do a turn here. On the purl row, you'll see that you have this thing that isn't really a stitch. It's just kind of a loop over the needle. You actually want to work it as a normal stitch. I want to finish this so you can see. Oops, these needles are too long to work on this table. So there's my little buttonhole. Much bigger in this thicker yarn with bigger needles, but that's that's how that works. Pretty cool, huh? Pretty cool that it's such a simple thing to work a buttonhole. Because in sewing, with a sewing machine, buttonholes are, <laughs> are a bigger deal <laughs> than a knit two together yarn over. Okay, let me check my list here before we move on. Okay, yes, we did all of that. So, you're going to follow the pattern. I've shown you all of the uh, techniques you're going to use from here until we get down to separating the sleeves. The cable cast on, the make one, the buttonhole, um, everything you need. Working the increases around the markers. That's all you need until we get to dividing the sleeves, so I will meet you there. That's it. Continue following the pattern and knitting um, as many of the increase rounds as it says until you get to uh, the right stitch count for the size you're knitting. I don't know why that was so hard to say. <laughs> Next up, we'll do the big exciting thing of separating the sleeves and just knitting the body. Okay, you've gotten to a very crucial part in the sweater where you have all the stitches you need and you're ready to divide for the sleeves. This is a very basic top-down raglan technique. Once you learn it on this tiny sweater, you can take this information and use it on all kinds of sweaters. So I'm excited to show you. Let's take a look. Okay, you've been knitting along working front sleeve, back sleeve, front, and you've gotten to the point in the pattern where it says divide body from sleeves. And that's what we're going to do now. And your work will look something like this. Looks just like a sweater, right? <laughs> it's funny how far we've come from this to this with the markers all in their same spots. This color of yarn in Perfection Sport is called Fieldstone. Okay, so for this part, you're going to need some scrap yarn and a tapestry needle, some needle with a big eye. And I actually like to use this thin crochet thread because it doesn't stick to the yarn at all. It's cotton crochet thread. I like to use this for separating sleeves. Um, actually, while I was moving, I was in an Airbnb and I separated some of the sleeves onto uh, the only scrap yarn I had at the Airbnb. I was house hunting at the time and it was really hard to get the yarn out because it stuck to the, um, it stuck to the stitches and after getting moved around and, you know, anyway, it was, I like to use this cotton thread. Let's just leave it at that. And I'm going to need some scissors. It's going to get noisy. Sorry. Okay. So all I'm going to do, following the pattern here, is knit up to the marker and it's quite a few stitches. I think I have the medium size here. I, I knit my sample sweater in the medium size, which is what? Medium size is 6 to 12 months.
Oh no, we're having a yarn situation. <laughs> There's a lot of yarn situations at my house. <laughs> Every day it's a new yarn situation. I don't use these needles all that often. These are Addy Turbos. There's a satisfying click to them. Okay, I knit up to the marker. Remove marker. That's the next bit of instruction. Remove marker. Then get your scrap yarn ready with your tapestry needle. And we are going to slide all of the sleeve stitches, the stitches between those two markers onto scrap yarn. And I'm just sliding them across onto the scrap yarn. It's scary. It's scary. Can you trust the scrap yarn? Make sure you have a piece that's long enough. I haven't, this, this uh, crochet thread is still actually attached to the ball. I just dropped a stitch. Watch me use this needle to rework that stitch. <laughs> you know me, I never stop the camera when I make a mistake. You have to watch me correct it. There's another drop stitch. It wasn't, it was just off the needle, it didn't drop. Okay. You get to the other marker, you remove that marker, and I'm gonna shorten up this a little bit. You see there's plenty of extra crochet thread here. I'm gonna cut this, and then just to be really safe. I'm going to tie a little knot. Boop. That's not going anywhere. Okay, so now we're left with this huge gap between the last stitch of the front, the left front, and the first stitch of the back. No problem. Just start knitting. It's amazing how knitting works. Okay. So what you've done is just connected. This, this is the armpit, right? This is the armpit of the sweater. There's the front. There's the armpit, and then we're knitting the back, and the little sleeve is here. We're going to come back to it. Isn't that great how this works? I'll never not be excited about top-down raglans and how this works. So you're going to knit across to the next marker and do the exact same thing. Remove the marker, slide all of these stitches onto scrap yarn, remove this marker, and then when you have a huge gap between this stitch and this stitch, you just start knitting and everything comes together and you will end up with a little sweater, a little muscle tee sweater. <laughs> I, th I think a muscle tee is actually shorter sleeves like that. <laughs> a, short, a cap sleeve sweater. Okay, that is it for this part. Once you finish, once you finish separating the sleeves, it's really easy knitting. You're going to just keep on knitting the um, first and last three stitches of every row of, um, of the purl side rows in knit for this garter stitch border and then the rest of it is just stockinette stitch and then when you get to the bottom you're going to work all knit rows for the bottom garter stitch border and that's it really that's it then you bind off and when I bind off this is your bind off row when you bind off you uh, might want to use a needle size larger. That's what I like to do. A lot of patterns will tell you bind off loosely. 
<laughs> I can never bind off loosely evenly. Like four stitches will be bound off loosely and the next four will be tight. You know, I, so I just use a needle size larger to bind off and I end up with a really even, loose um, bind off row that isn't too stiff or tight. Okay, that's it for this section. So your stitch count just got way lower with that. So um, that's how you separate the sleeves. Go ahead and finish knitting the body and the bottom border. And then next up, we're going to knit uh, the sleeves themselves and pick up and knit around the collar. Most of the knitting is finished at this point and you have a funny little muscle tee looking sweater. <laughs> I'm gonna show you how to fix that and give it some sleeves. Uh, and I wanna let you know, you can use whatever you, uh, your preferred method for knitting small tubes. If you're a sock knitter, you probably have a favorite method, whether that's short circulars, double pointed needles, magic loop, um, flexi flips, two circulars, am I leaving anything out? Anyway, you just pick your favorite. I'm gonna demonstrate on DPNs. I think this, this is actually easiest on DPNs. Well, it is for me, but I like DPNs. Not everybody does. Pick your favorite. I'm gonna show you how to do it on DPNs. Let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, we are really into the nitty gritty of sweater knitting right now. <laughs> we are ready to pick up the sleeves. We're ready to knit these sleeves that we put on scrap yarn and you can use your favorite kind of needles for knitting in the round, for knitting a small diameter in the round. I'm going to use double pointed needles. And we're gonna start, um, I like to pick up my stitches from right to left because that's the direction I knit. So I'm gonna start here at the underarm and just slide my needle in next to the scrap yarn Now, if you like, you can pick these up using a smaller needle size and then switch to larger needles when you, um, when you knit your first round. But these needles are pretty slick. These are Chow Gu double pointed needles. And I'm going to roughly separate <clears throat> roughly separate this into thirds. And now that I have that needle in, I can pull the scrap yarn out of those stitches. So I caught the yarn there. That's handy that I caught it on the last stitch and not the first one. <laughs> Much easier to fix on camera or in real life. It's tricky here. Whoops, something happened. The yarn isn't going through these last few stitches. I must have accidentally pulled it out. You're getting to watch me pick up all kinds of stitches now. I'm just going to pop this loop over that thread and I've picked it up and I can pull out the rest of scrap yarn and look at that. All the stitches are on the needles. I'm ready to start knitting around in, um, 
it with double pointed needles to knit the sleeve. Now, if you're new to double pointed needles, this is actually a really good project for learning how to use double pointed needles and getting better at it um, because you're not starting with a cast on row. It's much easier to have some work below your stitches, um, below your live stitches to start uh, working with double pointed needles. Working from a cast on row, you're double pointed needles can start flopping around acting like wind chimes. <laughs> so this is a little bit easier. Um, okay, I want to follow the pattern here so I can get this right. We're going to knit this sleeve and we're also going to do some decreasing. You can see my decreased stitches here on the underside of the arm. Nothing to worry about. The beginning of my round is here in the armpit. And because I'm using double pointed needles, I can't use a regular stitch marker, but if I wanna make sure I don't miss that I, I'm knitting along that I don't forget that it's the beginning of my round, I can always put a clippy marker here. And that's my little reminder. Hey, lady, you're at the beginning of the round. Okay. But for this round, whoops, let me get the pattern in front of me. Okay, we're gonna work a decrease round here. You can also pick up some extra stitches here. That's what I was checking for to see if um, Vanessa says to pick up extra stitches there. You can, um, we're gonna cover pick up and knit here in just a minute, but you can pick up extra stitches just by putting your needle in where there isn't a stitch. And then wrapping the needle in. <laughs> that happens at least once when you're doing this. Wrapping the needle and pulling it through carefully, and you have an extra stitch there that will help fill the gap in the underarm. Um, this pattern doesn't call for that, so we, I will just show you how to take care of that. You can still do it if the pattern doesn't call for it. But first, let's just work on knitting around these stitches. Oh, these DPNs are nice. So double pointed needles, if it's not something that you normally work with, it looks really complicated. How are you knitting with four needles at the same time? You see, I'm just knitting with two needles at the same time. The rest of the needles are just waiting there for me. Not doing anything. I finished the last stitch on this needle. My next stitch is always to the left of my working yarn. So even if I put my work in my knitting bag and come back to it, my next stitch is always to the left of my working yarn. Okay, finish that needle, my next stitch. These stitches are a little fussy, they're the ones I dropped. Okay, I'm back at the beginning of my round. There's my stitch marker, my clippy marker. Let me get this so you can see. Right here, I always tie a knot with my tail end and my working yarn. It helps close everything up, keeps everything pretty tidy, and if the knot comes loose, you can always tighten it up um, when you finish the sweater. And this is the thing I was gonna tell you. Do I have a sample to show this? All these samples, I don't have a sample to show this. This is my best, my best um, way to show it. You see that there's a gap here in the underarm. It's totally normal. This is what happens with top-down raglan sweaters. Really, it is what happens anytime you change direction in your knitting, which we certainly have done here. You have this tail end 
that you can use to just stitch that up. You have to weave in this end anyway. You can just stitch that up. You can see my work here. It's exactly what I did is I just used that tail end to stitch up the hole there. I mean, the hole in this sweater looked just like this, the green one, um, when I started, and you can see that it's gone. But I wanted to make a special point about that because uh, it's, people are always very stressed out about the hole they get here, the hole they get when they, um, when they start doing something almost identical, knitting the thumb on mittens or gloves, you end up with a, a, the same gap here in not the armpit, but the thumb pit, all the pits. <laughs> You have to stitch it up. Just leave this long enough so you can just put it on a tapestry needle and stitch it up. Don't even try to get too worked up about knitting it up correctly or incorrectly. If it looks right, you've done it right. You've done it. You've done a great job. You're golden. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at what a decrease round looks like because we're doing the, we're decreasing in the underarm area. So a decrease round is knit one, knit two together. K2 tog, you work the rest of the round, this is really just a chance for me to show DPNs again. I want people to not be afraid of DPNs. I know people go to great lengths to avoid using double pointed needles and I think it's mostly because they look scary because they're not tough to use. Nowadays though, I mean, truth be told, we have a lot of different ways to knit small diameters. We have double pointed needles, magic loop, short circulars, and short circulars have come a long way. Like the, the Knitter's Pride Mindful shorties are really good. The Chow Gu sets where you can put a longer needle in your right hand, the Addy, are they called sock rockets? They have a longer needle for your right hand. Did I say flexi flips? The, the flexible double pointed needles. There are all kinds of ways I think that is less intimidating, at least in appearance, than double pointed needles. But I like double pointed needles. So we get to the last three stitches and we're gonna work a second increase. This is called mirrored decrease, not increase, don't increase. <laughs> You're gonna end up with really wide sleeves. These are called mirrored decreases. We worked a knit two together when we started and knit two together is a right leaning decrease. And now we're gonna work a left leaning decrease so that it's mirrored along the line of the underarm. And we'll take a look at my finished work again. I'm going to SSK, slip as if to knit, slip as if to knit, put my needle into the, my left needle into the front of those two stitches and knit them together. A left leaning decrease and knit one. And I'm back at the beginning of my round. Okay, mirrored decreases. You see? Dun, 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 It's very tidy. Like if, some, if the baby is wearing a sweater and raises her arms, the world's going to see very tidy decreases on the underarm of the sweater. Okay, one more thing I've got to show you here, which is pick up and knit. Um... I need to use a different color of yarn because the green is busy with the sweater. So you see this, this neckline is looking pretty rough and the finished sweater, it actually looks very cute, matches the bottom border. That's what we're going to do. But we don't have any stitches here. So we're going to pick up and knit some stitches. And what you do is you want to get your um, straight or circular needles, not a double pointed needle. I'm just going to use this because it's, it's here. And put it under two strands. You want to start at the very, the very edge here. Because if you start kind of one stitch in, it won't really match up well. And grab your same color of yarn, not a different color of yarn, unless you want a color like that. I usually like to leave about a six inch tail, make a loop, wrap it over the needle, and carefully pull it through, so it's gonna try to jump off. Okay, that's one stitch picked up. That is the whole thing. 
then go into the next stitch put it under two strands wrap it and that'll happen a good third of the time is you drop it like that wrap it and pull it through into the next stitch Okay, so you go along like this and every few stitches stop and stretch it out and make sure it's looking okay because if it's not it's going to show in your work let me let me do a, uh, an example of when i would pull something out i'm going to deliberately do a couple of crazy things here okay stop and give it a tug it didn't look, didn't, doesn't look as bad as I was hoping it would look. But I, I went into a section where it's kind of leaving a hole. It was, I could tell that it was not a good place to pick up a knit. And in these last two stitches, I only went under one strand. And when I give it a tug, it is pulling more. So those last three, those aren't good. I want to not go in a big gaping area like that. I can just skip that area and pick up there, beautiful. And then be sure to go under two strands on the next one, nice. There's another kind of a gap here. This is where we were doing the cable cast on. Let's take a look at that. I'm not really pleased with that one. Do pay attention when you do this part because it is right up right up around the face so it's an important part of the sweater to get right and it's just so easy to just take a look and make sure it looks good before you move on oh that's looking so good okay nice that one's kind of a hole whoops It does help to have, use a pointier needle with this, a sharper point. Yes, that's looking amazing. And then um, you'll pick up all the stitches all the way around. Important note, the pattern is going to tell you a very specific number of stitches to pick up. It's kind of like adding sugar to your coffee. Go by feel here. You know, see what looks good and the exact number of stitches to pick up is really not that important. You want to get close. You want to get close. Vanessa has given us a good number to shoot for. But if you are picking up an extra stitch or uh, you know, a couple of fewer stitches, whatever it is, you're good as long as it looks good and just keep checking your work as you're doing it. Let me check my notes. I don't want to leave anything out. We did it all. And that is it. You can pick some cute buttons for it. Dig through the button box like I did to find three mismatched ones or you know, any little buttons will do. Um, many thanks to Kramer for letting me, uh, for sponsoring this video and letting me do this pattern. Many thanks to Vanessa Ewing for designing such a cute pattern. Her patterns are always so well written. I love to work with them. And I hope you enjoy knitting this sweater. Um, I think that's it for this time. Good luck.